It's the Spooky Show with Willie. <laughs> Greetings, ghouls, and welcome to the Spooky Show. The show where we talk about spooky stuff. My name is Willie Muse, coming to you from the... And if you guys know me, you know that before I got trapped in this awful place, I had one love above all else. Farming. Between you and me, nothing got my balls bouncing harder than waking up to the sound of a rooster crow, grabbing my pitchfork, and going outside at sunrise to harvest bushel after bushel of corn in my field. There was just... Well, there is nothing like it. With this in mind, you can imagine the horror I felt when I went outside to my field one morning and saw that overnight someone had flattened down my crops. Naturally, I assumed it was those devious baker boys from two doors down playing one of their cotton-picking pranks on me, but then I remembered that they, they died when their meth lab exploded. So I started asking around, trying to figure out what happened to my field, and you can imagine how surprised I was when people tried to tell me that aliens had messed up my backyard. Uh, I didn't know what this meant, and I wanted to get to the bottom of it. But then I did some of the Baker Boys' meth, and I kind of forgot about it until just now. Whoopsies. That said, now that I'm trapped in the void, I finally have time to do the research that I always wanted and answer the question that plagued me all those years ago. So that brings us to that question, which is, are crop circles caused by aliens? <laughs> For those of y'all who don't know, uh, crop circles are circular formations of flattened crops which pop up overnight, seemingly out of nowhere. Um, a lot of people, mostly uh, with ponytails and beards think that they have um, supernatural properties and ties to extraterrestrial activity, while a lot of other people think that they're a hoax. I guess today I'm here to tell you which side of this argument I fall on. And here's a hint. I can't grow a beard. In order to understand crop circles, we first need to understand their history, which some say dates all the frick back to 1633 with the story of the mowing devil. Uh, according to the story, uh, there was a farmer in Hertfordshire, England, who was trying to uh, get someone to harvest his crops for him. But uh, the guy that he found tried to charge him so much that the farmer said he would rather the devil himself uh, tend to his field than pay. Uh, weirdly enough, the farmer got his wish. That night, his fields glowed with a fiery light, and he reported seeing a demon-like creature chopping down his crops in a circular formation. He told his story, which eventually ended up in a woodcut pamphlet, because I guess that's what journalism was back then. Um, and we were left with this picture, which I got to admit, really looks like a crop circle. The story of the mowing devil is important because it seems to suggest that crop circles have been around for a very, very, very long time, which if they are in fact legitimate, would probably have to be the case. Um, furthermore, if you do believe that they are extraterrestrial in nature, it seems to support your claims because there are a lot of connections to be drawn there. Um, the light that the farmer saw could have been considered the light off of a UFO, and the demon-like creature might very well be a farmer from the 1600s' best attempt at describing an alien. That said, because the crops in this story were cut and not flattened, I don't think that it's actually a crop circle story so much as a very weird story told to us by what I can only imagine was a very drunk farmer. I think a more realistic place to start when talking about the history of crop circles is in the 1960s-ish, 1970s range, uh, when the Cold War and Roswell had people obsessed with all things UFOs. As best I can tell, these initial sightings were called saucer nests because they were purported to be the landing sites of flying saucers and were reported in conjunction with UFO sightings. Uh, basically, people would be like, hey, I saw a UFO, and then they'd find some flat corn and be like, see, look, proof. As you do. 
These initial sightings occurred primarily in English-speaking countries like the UK, Canada, and Australia, and starting out were nothing more than very simple circular designs like this. As news of these initial sightings spread and crop circles became more and more associated with UFO activity, they began cropping up everywhere. Reports of crop circles surged in the 80s and 90s, and their patterns started getting more and more complex to the point where we went from this to this. Crop circle fever was a worldwide phenomenon when in 1992 something super duper duper amazing happened. Two guys came forward and took credit for all crop circles kind of ruining the fun for everyone. The two men who claimed to be responsible were named Doug Bauer and Dave Chorley, and, well, they kind of seemed like they sucked a little bit. Uh, they were basically just hoaxers who claimed to have made over 200 crop circles between 1978 and 1991, and to prove it, they actually made a crop circle in front of a reporter, which they were then able to pass off as real to a crop circle expert. The way that they did this was actually very simple. They just took a piece of wood and some rope, and they just stamped down the crops in a circular formation, which is literally the opposite of a high-tech UFO. Well, I don't think that Bauer and Chorley are solely responsible for all crop circles. I do think that there's a lot of evidence to suggest that these things are, in fact, man-made. The fact that they initially popped up only in English-speaking countries suggests that they're a cultural phenomenon rather than a paranormal one. While the fact that they keep getting more and more complex also points to them being a hoax as well. Uh, I don't understand why aliens might change up their shit in such a short amount of time, but it would make sense to me why hoaxers would. Uh, they're basically just trying to get noticed, so it would make sense that they would want to keep going bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. Most importantly, though, I think that the biggest evidence for these things being fake is the fact that they're still fairly recent. Um, if you don't count the mowing devil, which I don't, um, you don't really get reports of crop circles until the 1960s, and if these things are real, you would think that someone would have seen them before the invention of the Big Mac, because honestly, who is looking at fields closer than people who lived before the 1960s? So that's it, right? Problem solved, end of episode. Well, not exactly. According to Crop Circle diehards, just because some circles are hoaxes doesn't mean that they all are. Uh, they draw a distinction between hoax circles and quote unquote real circles, and they say that real circles have certain incredible properties that you can't fake with a 2x4 and some string. Now, I won't be able to go into all of these because well, crop circle researchers have a lot of free time on their hands, and there's a lot of them. But I will go into their what I would consider the best of this evidence, and believe me, when I say the best, it's fine. The first of these are what proponents call orbs, which are kind of what they sound like. Uh, people report seeing floating orbs of light in the vicinity of crop circles, which, if true, is very strange. Uh, theories for what these orbs might be range from everything from ball lightning to alien technology, although I've seen them and I think that they kind of just look like something got caught on a camera lens, so I don't really buy this one. The next major argument in favor of crop circles being something paranormal is the weird effects that they're said to have on the human body. Um, I won't be able to go into all of them because there are a lot, so I will just limit it to my favorite, which is the so-called Viagra effect, and that, thankfully, is exactly what you'd expect it to be. Some people have claimed to have experienced very sudden and unexpected erections upon entering a circle, which is a weird thing to admit to another person. Um, Believers would explain this away as being due to some sort of strange energy field given off by the crop circle, although even the very biased book I read said that it was probably something psychosomatic. So my guess is that this theory came 
from something that looked a little bit like this. Can't believe we're finally getting to study crop circles. It just, it just, oh my god, are, are you aroused right now? What? Uh, 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 no, uh, must, must, must be aliens. Wonderful, wonderful. Fun fact, both of those actors were me. Honestly, the only good evidence I can find for crop circles being anything more than, well, circles of crops is the supposedly strange properties that the crops in question have. Um, researchers say that crops in real circles differ from their hoax counterparts on like a fundamental structural level, which if you ask me, is actually pretty cool. The way they describe this is through a lot of very boring sciencey talk, which I don't really feel like going into right now, but the gist of it is that the plants in the real circles look like they've been blasted with very high doses of radiation, um, a claim which is apparently backed by the idea that people have measured high levels of radiation in crop circles. Um, if this is true, then yeah, it's very, very strange. That said, I unfortunately don't think that I believe that any of this is true. Uh, though the book that I read this all in used a lot of very scientific language, I don't think that it was all that scientific. Um, they made the distinction a bunch of times between real circles and hoax circles, and they said that only real circles had these weird properties. But as best I could tell, the only thing that made them real circles is because they supported the thing that they wanted to be true. Um, the people with the proof also seem to be the people who really, really, really want to believe in this stuff. And that unfortunately makes me think that they're only seeing what they want to see. So do I think that crop circles are caused by aliens? No, I don't. Um, I think that what happened is that people were looking for any evidence that they could to support the idea that UFOs were real and they found it in a small patch of flattened crops that maybe was caused by a spaceship landing there, but probably wasn't. Uh, I think that people then saw that the believers were using something that was very easily reproducible as evidence for something very, very hard to believe, and so they reproduced it just to mess with them. Um, the believers then used the thing that they made as proof to support their beliefs and the whole thing just spiraled out of control until this thing was such a phenomenon that people were seeing balls of light around them and blaming bent wheat for their spontaneous bony booze. That said, I think that's why I kind of like crop circles because while I don't think that they're caused by aliens, I do think that there's something special because I think that the human brain is a very special thing. For example, do I regret spending $20 on these for a small psych gag that probably wasn't even all that funny? Of course I do. Would I do it again? You bet, because the human brain doesn't always make logical sense, but that lack of logic is sometimes what makes the world an interesting place. At the end of the day, I really do think that crop circles are something as mundane as bent crops. Um, but we've been able to look at them and turn them into something that's truly out of this world. And if you ask me, that's pretty cool. I'm Willie Muse, and this was The Spooky Show. See you later, ghouls.